Jared, first half not up to the standard, obviously, and then the second half really fought back well. I suppose positive first. Must be proud of that second half. Yeah, firstly, um, yeah, positive how the, how, the, how the players responded. Um, but back to the first half, it was, you know, it was, yeah, it was embarrassing by our fronts in terms of how we played. Uh, the, the players were fully accountable to that. Um, you know, felt like we'd come into the game really well prepared. Um, the energy on this trip you know, was really positive. Um, but you know, we took we took a lot of learnings in that first half um, about you know, what's required to play the game, and we were beaten um, convincingly in around the contest. Um, centre bounce was a real issue, so we had to yeah, get to half time and um, try and reset. And um, but yeah, really disappointed. Um, you know, for, for the football club and how we performed there and obviously our supporters as well to be able to watch that. But the positive is, is um, and we've shown that you know, we do have resilience within us and uh, the players responded. Uh, I think we end up winning the second half. You know, if we take a positive from it against a very good side that are fighting for top four. And um, yeah, but we'll take a lot of learnings um, from the game. And you know, when you have to flip the magnets around a bit too, um, you unearth um, some players, and um, yeah, we saw that with young Hutchinson going into the middle, um, young Dewa on the wing, um, Ryan Marrick comes in the game, goes back. So yeah, some positives that we walk away with, um, but also a lot of learnings for us moving forward. Ruben Jimby started on Jeremy Cameron in that first half. Uh, obviously the team didn't help, especially up the field, but mm. um, what was behind that move and how did you sort of see that going? In the first half? Yeah, well, we knew we were going to be a bit under man. We're not having um, McGovern in the side. Um, and Brass hasn't been there for the last six weeks. So we knew we were going to be challenged um, in that space. And unfortunately, like, we were winning enough ball going forward and sometimes off clearance, but the ball was just coming back with interest. And um, you know, when you don't win contests forward of the ball and you don't get your defence in behind um, right, well then good players are going to um, step up. And they had Cameron, they had, they, they, the list goes on. Um, and Ruben had to deal with that. Had Brady Hoff go to him at various stages, but when the ball's coming in that quick, it's very hard for the defence to try and defend. What did you say at half time? Did you, was it a classic coach spray or what did you have to pull out to turn that around? <laughs> no, nah, they, they got some stern words at quarter time. Um, but yeah, all it is you know, in those moments is how we can re reset the team. And we showed some behaviours that aren't West Coast way, what we're chasing. And we took ownership of that. And once we sort of put that to bed, it's like, how are we going to go about playing the game? And getting back in the game, so we had to try and set the game up in a certain way. Um, but I just, I reminded the players that to remove them, remove themselves from the insular about them and think about the club, think about their teammates, and think about the brand. And um, they've got pride. You know, they're, they're, you know, they wear the West Coast jumper for a reason. Um, so that's where I'm proud because they responded in that space. But we had to set the game up differently. Um, I really just spoke about, you know, make sure we honour the contest. That's where Geelong really got hold of us early on. And I thought that started at centre bounce. You know, we started to get some ascendancy there, putting players in the middle, like Hutchinson in the middle. Um, we, we tried to do a couple of things outside the square. And really, when we, when we got our hands on it and we honoured the contest, uh, we were able to do a little bit more with our ball movement. And um, we really looked at, you know, changing angles, sort of shifting. And with that, there's always going to be mistakes at times. Um, but always thinking about what's next. And I think once they saw the fruits of that, I think we kicked five goals, six in the, in the third quarter. Once they saw that, well, they're human. You know, you, you respond to that. Um, they're giving themselves affirmation. And so we just keep trying to reinforce that. And then at, at three quarter time, it was more about um, staying true to what we were doing in that third quarter and, and finish the game in the right way. And, um, and I, thought they, I thought they did that. Without, without being rude, should you need to be 18 goals against you at half time to get that lesson? No, you shouldn't be. So the simple answer is no, you shouldn't be. Um, but you know, not the, we, we're not in a, in a space of making excuses. Um, definitely not on that. We're accountable. Um, and even in my time in the last six, six, seven weeks, we've had some honest conversations about accountability to one our perf an individual performance, but collectively as a team and, and how you got to respect the game. Yeah, you, know, you can't sit off the game. And what we got shown today was uh, when you sit off half a body on good players, they make you pay. And, but they're human as well, and you can become very reactive, and you can deviate, and we call it block version. You know, when we talk about the performance mindset, players can get a you know, bit blocked. So we gotta try and reset them, and, it's, and we gotta try and simplify messages as well. But you know, when, when you get momentum, as you saw us get momentum in the third quarter, what it does to your team, but it shouldn't take 18 goals to cap a couple of whack in the face for us to wake up. 
Um, definitely not. Um, and we'll be accountable to that. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're all in it together. Um, but, um, yeah, at the end of the day, we, we finished off strongly and that's what we wanted, but the game was done. How have you enjoyed this interim stint aside from the first half, but how have you enjoyed it overall? Oh, I've, I've stated before, I've really enjoyed the opportunity that was uh, you know, put on me to you know, lead the club. And uh, as I said, I've said it all along, just want to be in a position to try and help the team to be better and keep um, taking steps forward. And I think we've done that in small parts. It's hard when you only got six weeks to, to obviously put a real influence on it, but I think we've, you know, we've shifted the axis a little bit. Um, there have been some real honest conversations around how we want to go about playing the game and how, what we want to be seen to as, as a West Coast um, team. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've said it many times over the last probably five or six days, I've experienced all emotions. The highs of winning, you know, the defeats like today. Uh, and there's been games where we've been in games and um, like the, you know, the Brisbane game and the Freo game where we've been in, you're, sort of, you know, you're excited by that. So we played Brisbane, Fremantle, Carlton and Geelong in the last six weeks. Um, you know, no disrespect to Gold Coast and North Melbourne, but teams that are right in the mix of finals football. And what it's shown us is that that's the level and the benchmark you've got to get to. So I've thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity um, to be a part of this. And um, yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't take it back for nothing. I've really enjoyed it, to be honest. And um, so like, losses like today, you learn a lot about, not only about yourself you know, as a coach, um, but the collective as well and how you manage people. Um, so a lot of learnings for myself as well as there's a lot of learnings for players, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. How are you feeling about the chances at this stage of winning the <laughs> To be honest, I've said it before, my whole focus is on the game, <laughs> week to week. Um, the game's just done, I'm not even thinking about that. You know, my, my, my thoughts are with the players in, in, the, in the next room and um, our staff. You know, we spoke about it at the start of the week that the environment wasn't going to be the same. Coaches, um, coaches won't be there. Um, Matthew Knights is leaving us. We've got physios that have been with us for 20 odd years like that. They're, they're leaving us. Um, so, yeah, the room is going to be different. So my, my thoughts, um, interesting, my thoughts are uh, with the players and uh, all the staff next door. Uh, sorry. Um, have, as well as the players, you know, you said the players are going to be leaving as well. Does the club have any better idea on some players like Tom Barras and what their futures hold and a few other guys who are speculating about the media? No, look, look I, I said, I've said, I think I've said it before, I'm not privy to all that information. That's something that the club will work through with list management. Um, and the whole focus has been on us week to week playing, and that was on today's game. So, no. Kat, what did you say to them after the game today? There was, it was obviously disappointing with the result, but into a mixed mood, I suppose, that considering the second half comeback. What did you sort of say about the whole experience? Um, oh, it was just a message around that we, we got a real learning today. Um, and we, we took some learnings from it. Um, I spoke about, um, you know, that what the game you know, re requires um, to play at the best. Um, and I just touched on that and I really just thanked them um, for all their hard work throughout the year and um, really sort of just left them with a you know, lasting comment around making sure they stay connected, um, be tight, enjoy each other's company. But it was really just me. I just sort of thanked them really for all the support that they'd shown me in my time. Um, but yeah, didn't want to go too much into the game. You know, we, we touched on a lot throughout the game. They know where the game's at. Um, now it's about us, obviously, yeah, taking some time um, to stay connected and um, reset and, and look forward to um, what will be a, a big off-season and pre-season for the football club. I know you've been here the last three seasons now. Do you feel the results would suggest you know, that you've improved this year as a club? Do you feel like that you took a step this year? I think, we, yeah, I definitely think we have, have taken steps forward. Um, but we've still got a long road ahead of us in terms of where we're at. But I think what we've seen, as we saw today, our youngest team out there, I think, for the season. Um, so we've seen the growth of the young players, what they got exposed today. And we've seen our leaders step up when they've needed to step up. You know, I, I mentioned them over the last few weeks, you know, in critical moments to get us across the line and two, uh, two wins. Um, our leaders are really led well. And when you're, when you're not winning, and there's a lot of external noise around, you know, um, about the football club and what's going on. And then obviously you, the, the, the senior coach that was in place for 11 years um, leaves. Um, there's a lot of unsettling, but I think we've been pretty united and um, you know, connected as a football club. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's, um, you know, there has been a lot of steps forward um, with this football club. And we've showed a lot of resilience as a football club as well. And last time from me, do you sit down tomorrow and then you're back? and watch one of your former teams in Fremantle and do you get a little bit 
behind them, I suppose, in personally watching them try and play finals? Fremantle? Yeah. I'll probably be more supporting Port Adelaide. <laughs> Being an ex-premiership teammate um, of a lot of players, we've got our 20-year reunion, so I've got that in a week's time, so it could be fitting for Port Adelaide to maybe make it. So if I was barracking for any side in the finals, probably Port Adelaide. Thanks, Scott. No worries.